let's begin by setting up our project first so i have an empty unity project opened up and there's the sample scene and we'll start by uh, changing our build settings and we'll set the platform to android so all the game works uh, as it was supposed to be and uh, after we change our platform to android we'll import the text mesh row which should be inside the project settings and we don't uh, have any ui so let's just import it maybe after some time uh if you are creating the levels or something else so let's go inside project settings and uh, maybe i won't need it yeah i won't need it and uh, let's change the prefab naming to use underscore and uh, uh i just remembered that uh i was not using any ui uh we are just uh, going for the core logic and uh, you can set as many levels as you want it is also going to include an editor and uh, that's it gonna be and let's change our resolution and let's add our packages uh add our remover packages so we are just going to remove all the unnecessary packages so it doesn't slow down our editor and also it helps uh, reducing the build size and uh, mm, let's remove the vs code editor and visual scripting so if you turn on visual scripting it will add all the libraries or whatever it included and the final build size will be higher as we all uh, we do everything through code so we are not going to need it and uh, we'll remove all the unnecessary packages and then we'll add the files so we also don't need, uh, need the jet trains rider editor uh, we also don't need the test framework and xmesh pro it is uh, telling it's installed yeah let's just add it maybe if we need it then it should have been already added so let's import the text mesh pro and uh, inside our settings let's disable the warning so it doesn't show any warnings uh we also don't need the version control and we'll update the timeline it is not the latest version and after everything is added we'll uh, create our gameplay scene so everything's updated correctly so we'll go inside our scenes and uh, it is getting updated we don't need the build settings also the project settings and uh, the timeline's getting updated so it will be updated uh, pretty fast and now uh let's also close the package manager so we have a sample scene opened up we'll create a new scene and this scene is going to be our gameplay scene where uh, the whole game is going to be located uh we are not going to create any levels as we already done it before uh there are a couple of videos you can refer that so or else the video will be higher than two to three hours maybe even longer five to six so this is our gameplay scene now we'll start creating uh all the folders so first we'll create our scripts folder and uh, then we are going to have our uh, prefabs folder and i'm going to bring in the resources folder which should be uh, in the file uh, you can directly get it from the github repo so this is going to be a resources folder and it includes all the pipes and the backgrounds that were needed so this is the tile gray i already changed the resolution so if you import and it just has a pixels per unit of 100 so change respectively so each of them is going to be 219 and uh, uh, it's a reference like uh, here so 219 is supposed to be one cross one unit so that's uh, how the cell size is going to be our tile gray is also 128 cross 128 so here pixels per unit is 128 this one is 220 so we have included all the resources and uh, let's also create the script so there are just going to be two scripts the first script is going to be our game manager and the second script is uh, going to be our uh, 
pipe script so it is the script for the pipe whichever is located and after that we are also going to create a folder for our level generator so we'll create a folder for the level generator and it is going to include a new scene which is going to be saved inside our level generator and we'll call this generator and we'll save this scene and it is also going to include its own prefab which are which will need to create and also the scripts but uh, the script is going to be similar to the game manager and the pipe we'll just rename it to something else and we'll use it to edit the respective cells for the editor uh, it's going to have different functionality but uh, after the core logic for the game is created we are going to modify on it so we'll create that afterwards so that's it for all the resources and all the setup and in the next part we'll start creating our prefabs which are going to be the background cells and the pipes so let's go to the next video let's create our prefabs so the first prefab we are going to need is our uh, cell prefab so it's just a simple image and it is going to have a sprite render component attached and uh, the sprite we are going to use is our uh, tile gray sprite and as it's uh, already going to be similar color let's turn the background gray and we'll save this as a prefab and after we have the cell let's delete this we are going to have our pipes and uh, the parent object is uh, going to be this empty now let's create a background so let's create an empty and we'll call this bg and this bg we are going to attach the background so we can view how it is going to look when it is uh, tiled so we have our sprite renderer and we'll attach our background again so this is going to be uh, the pipe and uh, next let's duplicate this background and this is going to be our sprite and not sprite uh, this is going to be our pipe empty and our pipe empty is going to have the empty pipe and we need to change its order in layer so it's visible on top so that's where our pipe is going to be let's duplicate the pipe empty and then we are going to have our pipe filled and uh, its order in layer in, is going to be two and we'll attach our uh, filled image and what we'll do is uh, we'll save it as a prefab and we'll add it on this prefab so our pipe has this uh, four connections and it has the empty and the build image so now we need to add those connections so those are going to be our colliders so let's add our collider one which is going to be at negative 0 0.5 and uh, let's add a box collider 2d which has a trigger and x is going to be 0 0.32 and 0 0.5 and 0 0.32 so this is going to be our collider let's duplicate it again and this is going to be our top collider uh, let's duplicate it again and this is going to be our left collider but the size is going to be 0.3 to 1.5 let's duplicate it again and this is going to be our right collider now whenever you want to create a pipe what we'll do is that depending on this connections we'll uh, just uh, have only the uh, only those kind of colliders only at those connections so for here it has a collider at all four so let's duplicate our pipe and this is going to be our uh, pipe for the zero when uh, everything is empty so it doesn't need anything so we'll just remove everything so zero is for just empty now we are going to have pipe for the one and our one for our empty inside our resources it's going to be our uh, this one and it just has connection for the top we also need to change the filled one 
so as you can see uh, it just has connection for the bottom one so we removed the rest of the three so it will serve as our pipe one now let's duplicate our uh, base pipe prefab and this is going to be our uh, not base pipe it is going to be similar so this is going to be our pipe too and again it's going to be similar we don't need the background so we'll remove the background and uh, this one is for the source and this one is for the ending positions both are different so we just have two of them uh, we'll remove our pipe again and after that we'll rename it to pipe 3 and this one is uh, going to be for our horizontal one so we'll add our horizontal and also the field to the horizontal oh, uh, it's shown vertical here so it's going to be vertical and it's just going to need the one and the collider so we'll remove the three and the four and we'll also remove the background so this is going to be our uh, pipe three and after that we are going to have our corner pipe which is going to be pipe four so let's duplicate it and we'll rename it to pipe four and similarly we'll uh, set the empty so empty is going to be this one and our field is going to be this one but uh, it has different alignment so we need to change its uh, position negative 0 0.136 negative 0 0.136 and similarly for the field one negative 0 0.136 and negative 0 0.136 so this is how it's going to look and we just need the bottom and the left collider we don't need the two and the four so we'll remove that and everything is still attached and uh, pipe 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 okay so now we are going to create the next pipe we need to remove remove the background and uh, let's duplicate our pipe and this is going to be our pipe five which is uh, going to be for the t-shaped one and similarly we'll add the image and here we need to negative 0.136 for the bottom and for the filled one we are also going to add similar negative 0 0.136 and uh, it is going to be attached and the only thing we are going to remove is the two and we also remove the background so this is our pipe 5 and we have uh, almost all of our pipes uh, our pipe 6 is going to be our uh, plus pipe which is at the start we just uh, remove the background and this is going to be our pipe 6 so we have created all our prefabs now what we'll need to do is uh, spawn all of this prefab so we'll do it inside our game manager script so let's create our game manager object and uh, let's add our game manager component so we'll do it in the next part so this was just creating all of the prefabs so let's go to the next video so in the previous part we created all of our prefabs now what we need to do is uh, spawn those uh, pipes so we need we'll need one more script which is going to be for our level data and our level data is going to be of a scriptable object type so we need to save those data and uh, as we are going to save it inside the editor and load it again to the level we'll need some way to save it so scriptable object is a perfect way to almost uh, say all of the levels and we'll need to edit that script so we'll go inside visual studio so uh, the script opened up and first we are going to create our level data which is of the type scriptable object uh, i just change scrip ah now type so it is going to be of the type scriptable object let's uh, create asset menu uh, and our file name is uh, going to be level comma our uh, menu name uh, will just uh, 
add the menu name also as level so it will have as a drop down menu for creating that and after that we are going to have a public end for the row public end for the call and a public list of end for our data so we are going to save it as a list of integers it's going to be a 2d grid but uh, uh, we'll need to have some way to serialize it and we are already creating the editor so we'll just uh, save it as a simple list and after we have created that let's go inside unity and we should be able to create our levels so let's go inside our prefabs and we'll create and uh, you should have a level option and we'll just uh, rename it as level and it's going to be a four cross four grid and uh, the values are going to be data uh, so it should have 16 values and uh, let me type all of them so uh, we can edit directly but for now i'm going to type this so 21 11 23 4 34 33 34 33 14 23 12 34 33 23 34 33 23 and 11 4 2 3 so this is going to be levels uh, uh, this is our level so it has all the values and we have converted to number and uh, what those numbers show is the second digit is going to be the type and uh, uh, second digit i mean the percentage 10 so the tenth digit is going to be the type and the first digit is going to be the rotation so for the one and the two we will need a specific rotation so that's why it was needed and just uh, uh, put any numbers you want you can directly edit it afterwards so this is our uh, level uh, now what we are going to do is uh, spawn the level so let's go inside visual studio and uh, let's spawn our level so let's delete everything and let's create a public static game manager instance and inside our awake we'll set our instance to this if we need it and uh, let's create a serialized field for first our level data and we'll just call it uh, level underscore level and then we are going to have a serialized field for our private pipe uh, we are just directly going to Get reference to the script uh, not the game object and we'll call this self and we will also create all of our variables which we'll need so private pipe array and we'll call this pipes and after that we are also going to have a private list of pipe which are going to be our uh, start pipes so these are the variables we are going to need now instance let's create our function which is going to be spawning the level and uh, let's create our function so private void spawn level and inside our spawn level function our pipes mm, so much typing mistake is going to be a new pipe and as it's a 2d grid we are going to need our uh, both dimensions so pipe dot row and our pipe level dot column so it's going to be a 2d grid and we also need to set our start pipes and our row and our column we are going to iterate through that and level dot column so our first row is going to be the bottom so let's create our spawn position and it's going to be new vector 2 and it's going to be j plus 0 0.5 f and i plus 0 0.5 f uh, the rows are going to have the similar uh, 
y coordinate and uh, the columns are going to be changing in the x coordinate so that's why it's uh, inverted and what we'll do is we'll create a temporary pipe and it's going to be our instantiation of our cell prefab we'll set its position so temporary pipe dot transform dot position is going to be our spawn position and we'll set our initialization and we'll pass the value which is going to be from our level dot data and we'll pass i and the j and our data is uh, so i multiplied by level dot column so it's a uh, one level dot column so number of columns and then we'll add so it doesn't show any error so level data has the level uh, data stored as a uh, just a uh, one d array which is a list and we'll need to create this function so let's fix formatting in it in it generate generate fix formatting okay and then we'll generate method uh, and if we save it uh, so let's make it public and Int and what we are going to call it is a pipe. So, which pipe we are going to need? So, new not implement exception. Okay, so we'll need to create also the initialization function. <clears throat> so, when we instantiate, uh, it's just going to pass the value and uh, we are also going to add to our current grid so temporary pipe of our i and j not temporary pipe or pipes of i and j is going to be our temporary pipe and if our uh, temporary pipe dot pipe type so we'll need to create that so pipe type is equals to one which is our starting pipe then we are also going to add to our start pipes and after all of that is done and initialized we'll need to set up our camera so camera dot main dot orthographic size it's going to be our uh, math have dot max so maybe we'll have a rectangular level so we'll pass the level dot row and level dot column so it is going to set it to the maximum of that and we'll also set our camera position so let's get our camera dot main dot transform dot position and camera position dot x is going to be negative level dot uh, column they were multiplied by 0.5f so it uh, sets it as a float and our y is going to be multiplied by row so the number of rows are going to be for the y coordinate so let's add the row so it will be positioned at uh, the center and we'll set the camera's position to our camera position and we need to start showing the hints so the hint checking we are going to do it afterwards but we'll need to create our uh, pipe type so let's create all the variables we are going to need for our pipe and uh, let's create a hidden inspector and it is going to be public pool is filled and hide an inspector public end for our pipe type so now it should not cause any more errors and uh, we'll need to initial yeah we'll also need to initialize it so now there is not any errors and let's create our serialized field private transform so 
we are also going to need our pipe prefabs and uh, not serializable serialized field and after that we are going to have a private transform for our current pipe to rotate it and private integer for our rotation mm, private sprite renderer and the first one is going to be our empty sprite and private sprite renderer and this is going to be our fill sprite and private list of transform and this are going to be our uh, connect boxes so wherever everything is connected and private constant min rotation uh set it to zero max rotation will set it to three mm -hmm. yeah min rotation and max rotation plus one and private constant rotation multiplier and our multiplier is going to be 90 so let's just uh, have it as 90 and what is going to happen inside our init so our pipe type is going to be pipe and it's going to be percent of 10 and our current pipe is going to be instantiate and we are going to instantiate our pipe prefabs of pipe type and its uh, parent is going to be transformed we don't need to change any position but uh, let's just uh, set it to zero transform dot local position is going to be zero and after that if our pipe type is equals to mm, rotation is going to be pipe type is equals to one or our pipe type is equals to two then our rotation uh did i make it capital yeah so our rotation is going to be Pipe divided by 10. So the rotation is provided and it is going to be directly set up from there. Else, our uh, rotation is going to be math f, not math f, random dot range. And using system, system dot collections. Why is it using system? Let's remove the system what where is it is showing does not contain random dot range from min rotation to max rotation plus one okay so now it is uh, not showing any errors and our current pipe dot transform dot our Euler angles is uh, going to be our new vector three and we pass zero zero rotation and we'll multiply it by our multiplier okay so the rotation is set up and uh, the pipe is spawned now we need to set our empty sprite so our empty sprite is uh, going to be current pipe dot get child zero so it should be zero dot transform get child zero dot get component uh, sprite renderer get component sprite renderer and we'll uh, empty sprite dot game object dot set active to be our uh, display so 
if it is not filled then it is going to be turned on and after we have created our empty sprite our filled sprite is going to be get child one and we'll get the component right renderer and set active is going to be filled and if the default value is going to be zero or uh, one then it is going to be filled so we also need to check that so if our pipe type is zero or one then uh, is filled is going to be true and if our pipe type is zero then we'll just uh, directly return cause uh, it doesn't have any sprites and colliders so it is filled and this video is going to be long mm, and after we set our filled we also need to set our connect and uh, let's add a new list of transform and we'll add a for loop and it is going to go to current pipe dot child count and connect boxes dot add current pipe dot get child of i and we don't need to get the transform it uh, just returns a transform and the starting is going to be from and now our uh, initialization should be finished uh, let's uh, see if we have any errors so now what we need to do is uh, set up the parameters and uh, let's see if uh, shows any bug or everything is fixed so in our cell uh, we don't have our pipe script so we'll add our pipe script and what we need to add is just uh, all of our pipe and they are going to be added and we are in the correct order and inside our game manager let's unlock the we'll need to add our cell prefab which has the pipe script attached and our level data which is the level now if we hit play supposing there were not any errors and our level was loaded everything is uh, working fine and the camera size is uh, perfectly filled so we need to add two so um, let's just uh, add two inside the game manager that was the only problem and uh, plus 12 and let's play and uh, let's see if we have spawned all of the sprites so the ordering was this was going to be here and this is filled so it was going to be here and this is here so everything's uh, perfectly fine and we just spawn all of our pipe prefabs and in the next part we'll uh, see how we are going to rotate it and how we can check if uh, any of the pipes is filled or not so let's go to the next video in the previous part we spawned our pipes and now we are going to update the code to uh, change the input so whenever you click our pipe should rotate and we should uh, also see all the fills perfectly so here it should have filled it but it is not showing the fill sprite so we are also going to do that and most of the part is going to be through code so we'll see how we are going to do it and we'll start with the easiest functions and uh, then we'll connect them together so let's go inside visual studio so the pipe functions were the easiest so i'm going to create them first so the first function is going to be for updating the input and it's going to be a public function so public void update inputs so what is going to happen when we update the input so if our pipe type is a zero or our pipe type is a one or our pipe type is two then we are going to return cause uh, those are the static pipes and zero doesn't even have a pipe 
uh, else what we'll do is we'll just do rotation plus one and uh, we'll percentage it by our max rotation plus one so our max rotation is going to be three and uh, we need to have the value three and after that we'll set the angles so transform dot Euler angles is going to be zero zero rotation multiplied by rotation multiplier so it just uh, increases the rotation count by one and changes the angle and then we are going to have the update field and inside our update field the only condition we need to check if our pipe type is zero then we are just going to return because uh, zero is always going to be filled but does not have a reference to both of the sprites else we'll just uh, copy this here so uh we yeah we just need to copy both of so let's copy this and paste it here so it's just going to update the fill type and how we are going to know if it is filled so we are going to use a breakfast search to get all the connected components which is going to be from this function so public list of pipe and uh, we'll all this connected pipes so it is going to return all the connected pipes and uh, let's create our list of pipe result and we are going to return the result and what we are going to do is for each item in our connect boxes which should be box and uh, it is a transform we'll do a raycast so a raycast at 2d and it's going to be an array and we'll call it hit and it's going to be physics 2d dot raycast all and we'll pass the position which is going to be box dot transform dot position and the direction which is going to be zero and the magnitude which is going to be 0 0.1 f and for each of the hits so for int i is equals to zero i less than hit dot length we will add result dot add it so our uh, game just has one collider and if it hits anything then it is going to be the collider and it is attached to the pipe so we need to get hit dot collider dot transform dot parent which is the pipe and its parent is going to be the cell and the cells component is going to be our pipe so it is going to add that pipe and add it to the result so suppose we have four connections so what it's going to add is uh, the top box and its own box cause it's going to detect trigger on four of them so it will return uh, array of length eight where four are going to be the connected boxes and four is going to be the same so we can add the check here but uh, i am using a dictionary to store all of them so it will automatically get detected so i didn't add the check here so these are the functions we are going to need now let's go inside our game manager and we are going to have the update function and inside our update function we are going to check if we are finished the game so if the game has finished then we are just going to return if we have not finished then we'll first get the mouse position and it's going to be camera dot main dot screen to world point and we'll pass our input dot mouse position and then we'll get the row which is going to be math dot row to end and the row is going to be our y position and similarly our column is uh, going to be the x position and if our row is less than zero or column is less than zero then we are return if our row is uh, greater than or
if our row is greater than or equal to level dot row so we are going to return similarly if our column is going to be greater than we are going to return and also if our input dot get mouse button down of zero so not input dot get mouse button down of zero then also we are going to return i mean let's just check if we are clicking anything so if we are clicking anything then we have the position and we'll update the input so pipes for the row and the column dot update input update input and we are going to update the input and we'll start the coroutine for showing the hint so it's going to be a coroutine and that uh, it created a problem so i'll show you what problem it created a little bit afterwards so let's call it show hint and uh, we'll wait for yield return new wait for seconds for 0.1 f so whenever update input is called it is going to change the rotation and after that it is going to check for the hint so we are going to create two functions so first one is going to be the checking the fill and the second one is going to be the checking the width and both of them are pretty easy so check fill uh, if you have a, mm, which one third fill i think uh, we did in the connect game yeah so in the connect game we use the get uh, area so whichever nodes are connected so we are going to use that uh, using a q and a hash set and uh, i'll uh, it's pretty easy if you look at the code then you have to i'll just show and let's set our check win function so the check win is going to be pretty simple so what it is just going to do is uh, let's use a for loop and level dot row and again one more for loop and it's going to be level dot off and if our uh, pipe is not filled so our pipes of i and j dot is filled so if our pipe is not filled then we are going to return none of them is going to execute but if it is filled then we are going to set has game finished to true and we need to set has game finished to call at the start and instance is equals to this as game finished is equals to false and after the game is finished then uh, we'll just start the routine for our uh, game finished so we are not directly going to change it game fn not has been finished so we'll need to create this function and uh, let's create our private I am writer game finished and we'll here return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for two seconds and after that unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot load scene so that's just one scene so I'm just directly going to pass zero and that's how our winning is going to be checked and now let's see how we are going to check if anything is filled so our filling starts at our start pipes which we have saved so mm -hmm. foreign tiles equals to zero i less than level dot row and foreign j is equals to zero j less than level dot row not row level dot call will uh, first turn everything filled to false so pipe at temporary pipe pipes at i and j and if temporary pipe dot pipe type is equals to zero not is equals to zero then we'll first turn it to false so we'll 
turn everything to false and after that we are going to get the list of uh, 35 so q and this is going to be checked so what needs to be checked and it's going to be q of pipe check is going to be new q of pipes and we are going to have a hash set of pipe and this is going to be finished so which we have finished and after that for each pipe in our start pipes we are going to add to our check check dot in queue so we need to use the NQ. it is a queue and after that we'll use a while loop till our check dot count is greater than zero and what we are going to do is uh let's first get our current pipe so check dot dq and after that pipe is dq we are going to add it to our finished and we'll get the list of the connected pipes and it's going to be our pipe dot connected so it is going to give us the connected pipes and for each where connected pipes so these are the connected pipes in our connected if our finished so which we have finished if it does not contains our connected pipe then we are going to add it to our check so it is going to get checked and connected pipe Mm, mm, mm. so it is going to be get queued and when the whole queue finishes we are going to have the list of pipes inside our uh, finish and it is going to be a hash set so let's uh, set all of them to be filled and for each where item filled inside our finish will set Build dot update build not fill dot update build no not fill dot update build fill dot is filled is going to be true and uh, we are going to update everything to check if it is filled so that's the temporary pipe Mm, mm, mm. temporary pipe dot update field and our update field should have a check if uh, it is zero so that's how we are going to check it so as you can see it is going to uh in queue our start pipes and uh we'll add it to our finished pipes we'll get all those connections and add it to the queue again and if we reach like similar then they are going to be dequeued and at the end our queue is going to be empty so it's a pretty simple trick or else i would have to do some uh, different data structure like we did inside the connect game but uh, just using colliders had it uh, pretty easy and we don't need to check anything else so everything should work perfectly fine and we should not have any errors so let's hit play and uh, let's see if our game crashes so yeah and as you can see it is connected and this is also connected and this is also connected and this is also connected and the game should finish and it should restart so everything's working fine now let's go to the bug so i told you about the bug and what it was so after spawning the levels we are going to start coroutine of uh, show hint so let me show you the bug instead of uh, start coroutine show hint 
if we call the check fill and the check one function here so uh let's go inside visual studio so we are updating the input and we are going to check for our fill and then we are going to check for our win which we already did in the previous part but in the all of the previous games so we were just directly checking with values and uh, as you can see this function is inside update and our update input how it works is uh, it uh, does not check uh, for that update value so let's go inside our pipe and uh, as you can see our uh, transform is changed like uh, somewhat like here so and uh, it showed the error so let me hit play so this got updated but as you can see this is not getting updated this also is not getting updated so why it is happening so let's go inside visual studio so uh, maybe it is happening because uh, we are updating the filling and everything so it is detecting everything through the update and uh, the updates value are updated at the next frame or the end of the frame and our rotation and Euler angles so uh, this our connected pipes so as you can see it is using transform dot position and our update input is changing the angles but this angle will be updated in the next frame and uh, we are checking it in the current frame so that's why it is uh, getting the error and uh, that's why I had to add the delay so it always pass, uh, gets the value from the next frame and the transform position is changed so let's go inside unity and uh, let's hit play and we'll check if it is uh, working fine so as you can see we are uh, finishing the game and i just uh, only created the core gameplay i didn't do anything else so if you want to add you can create your own levels and uh, that's what we are going to do in, the, do in the next part so we'll create our level editor which we uh, where we can place our pipes and uh, save it inside our level prefab so this is our prefab we'll directly save it uh, while editing the level so let's go to the next part so in the previous part we finished our game now what we need to do is uh, create our editor and save it inside our uh, list which is our scriptable object and uh, if we can save one of our levels then we can save all of the levels and uh, mm, this game is supposed to be pretty easy so i'm not going to add any procedural generation and uh, if you want to try you just uh, can create 20 levels and update on the play store create your own graphics and you can do whatever you like so i am just going to cover the basic uh, not basic the core gameplay which is connecting and detecting everything else you can edit yourself so let's go inside our level generator and what we are going to need is uh our sponsor script so let's duplicate it add it to our level generator and we'll rename this uh, cell to be our spawn cell and uh, let's rename the file let's remove the pipe script so this is going to need two more scripts and uh, yeah so the first script is going to be our generator script which is going to be the game manager for our level generator and uh, let's create our generator mm. and uh, yeah, it's already added and our spawn cell is also going to have one more script which is our spawn cell and uh, let's add our uh, spawn cell script and both of the scripts are going to be similar to the pipe and the game manager script so we are just going to directly copy it but uh, there are going to be some additional functions which is uh, going to be for uh, editing our levels having more inputs and uh, uh, also saving the levels so 
Mm, everything is going to be pretty similar. So what we are going to do first is uh, copy our game manager code. It is, is it? Mm, I don't know. So let's just copy the whole code. And we are going to paste inside our generator. And similarly for our pipe, uh, let's copy everything and we are going to paste it inside our sponsor now let's fix all the errors there will obviously be errors and the first error is going to be inside our generator here we uh, public static of the type generator maybe if you need it instead of pipe we are going to have a type of spawn cell and similarly we need to change all type to sponsor and uh, new sponsor and this is also going to be sponsor instantiate instead of pipe sponsor any more errors there are four more which should be here uh, this is also going to be our sponsor type and of type of type of type and sponsor sponsor pipe 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 dot connected pipe so uh we also need to change inside our pipes so sponsor tab sponsor 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 and now there are not any errors pipe type uh, private 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 sprite render private transform okay we just need the transform and uh, private list of uh, transform okay so they are only transforms and now uh, let's see if our level generator also works similar new sponsor okay so new list of type sponsor let's delete this pipe uh do we have any more errors cannot implicitly convert pipe so it is the generator we need to convert it to type sponsor uh any more um, let's go and what should happen is our level should not load because we don't have all connected so this is going to be our spawn cell our level data is going to be from our prefabs and inside our spawn cell let's lock the transform for our pipe prefabs we are going to have from 0 to 6 and now let's hit play so as you can see we can see all of our uh, pipes and uh, let's change the main camera's color to match the grayish color which is the center one and uh, let's hit play so this is our pipe we can connect and place and uh, everything is shown fine but uh, there are a couple of things we are going to need we don't need the game to end uh, we'll need to get the value from our spawn cell so let's close our level data and the pipe also our game manager so our sponsor is just going to have one more variable which is going to be public int and it's uh, going to be of generator yeah nothing else public int and we'll call it pipe data and how it is going to be calculated is a pipe type plus rotation multiplied by 10 so if the rotation is 0 and uh, it is going to return 1 uh, no rotation then 0 1 2 and 3 and if you multiply it by 10 then the tens value should be your pipe type which should be 0 1 2 and uh, i think it is still 6 yeah 0 1 2 3 and 6 and inside our generator we are going to need a couple more functions but uh, the only thing we won't need is our uh, check build 
as everything is going to be filled we will still need to edit it and also the game finish also we are not going to need it and as check fill as uh, not check fill check when mm, yeah so we don't need that maybe we should not have deleted it uh, previously i didn't delete it so only thing we don't need to do is uh, finish the game uh, let's add the check win uh, let's rearrange everything am i yeah i am inside visual studio sometimes i may forget so happens and the final script and this is our generator script which is going to be needed to be edited ah, nah, 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 nah. Mm, yeah generator is also going to be need to be edited mm. so let's save the data so we are going to have a private void for save data and uh, what it's going to say is for entire is equals to zero i less than our uh, level dot row and similarly one more for loop for j is equals to zero level dot column will update level dot data at uh, i multiplied by level dot column plus j uh, and it is going to be equal to pipes of i and j dot pipe data so it is going to be updated and we need to date it uh, editor utility dot set dirty and we need to save the level or it won't be saved and after we have saved the data we also need to restart all the pipes so <laughs> so let's create restart not restart reset start pipes so whenever we create the start pipe we need to add it here uh, or it won't show the field so we'll set the start pipes to be a new list and for entire is equals to zero i less than level dot row and for int j is equals to zero j less than level dot column uh if our pipes at i and j dot pipe type is equals to one which is the start type uh start pipe and we'll add it to our start pipes and it's going to be our pipes of i and j so it is going to reset the start pipes and uh, when we go the head We'll first reset our start pipes then we'll check for the filling condition then we'll check for the win and then we are going to save the data but uh, we don't have uh, any method to change our pipes value we just have the init and here it is uh, initializing so what we need to do is uh, before initializing we'll need to delete it and spawn it again so that's the only thing we'll need to do yeah so before it is set up we'll just check if current pipe is not equal to null then we are going to destroy our current pipe dot game object or it won't work and initialization function is uh, now updated to a spawning function so it was already the spawning function but uh, yeah so now we can add it so now how we are going to spawn the pipes will bind each of the value to a key code i mean to a keyboard 
and whenever that key is pressed will update the input on that uh, pipe which should uh, which we can directly get it uh, how we update the input which is the pipes of row and call and we'll call the init method again and that should work so what we'll do is input dot get key down and the first key is going to be c then uh, what we'll do is pipes at row at call dot init of zero so pipes at row comma call dot init of zero and we just need to paste this uh how many pipes are there i think there are seven pipes the empty zero to six yeah there are seven pipes so one two three four five six seven mm, so if it is z then it's going to be one x is going to be one is going to be two which is the exit pipe then we are going to have the v to be three and we'll use asd a to be four s to be five and d to be six and the show hint is always going to be called so let's just call it here whatever happens we are always going to check it so it is going to be added at the bottom and now if we don't have any errors so let's go inside unity and uh, mm, yeah so we should be able to edit it I forgot to add one more thing, so uh, let's add Z, X, C, X, C, C, V, A. Okay, uh, it is creating some issues. So it's supposed to be horizontal, and uh, we need to change it to a V and now it's connected the game is not getting restarted and we can change all the pipes which is the zxc v a s and d a s s is some problematic so we forgot to change for the s s s so uh we forgot to add the pipe and there is uh, one more problem so we are not initializing our uh starting a scriptable object we are just modifying it so that's going to be the final function we are going to need and uh, it's going to be created before spawning the levels and we'll call it uh, create level data and create level data and what we are going to check if our level dot column is equals to our call then we are going to return and we'll need to create the serialized streams for that private int row and call so how many rows and columns we are going to need and if it is equal then that means we don't need to change anything or uh, uh, if both are equal level dot row is equals to row then we are going to return else this is set the level dot row to be equal to row level dot uh, column to be equal to call uh, level dot data is going to be new list of integers and we'll use a for loop uh less than row one more for loop and it's going to be less than call and we'll add level dot data dot add we are just directly going to add zero so it is going to initialize that zero at the start 
and that's the only thing that was remaining so now if we change the values it will be reset to zero so let's go inside unity and previously we had four cross four now let's change it to three cross three so what we should have is a new level which uh, where we can add it so let's add our uh, starting here and uh, yeah so there is one more bug which should be inside our spawn cell and the rotation so we are not going to move type 1 and type 2 else we can move so that was the only thing so now we can spawn and it should have already been saved so as you can see and let's add horizontal here horizontal here and uh, everything else going to be vertical 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 uh, corner and corner and finally the end which is going to be c uh, it should be here uh, here we have the horizontal and everything is filled now it should have been saved and we can see it inside our gameplay if we click the level loaded is going to be our editor level which we have created and saved so that's how we are going to save and uh, everything works uh, as we have created the level and that was it for this part our level editor worked uh, perfectly fine and you can create multiple levels say all of them as a list and load multiple levels and there could be a whole lot of things you can do but this is going to be the core uh, logic for the pipes game and uh, that was for this part and see you guys in the next video thank you guys for watching